With only a few clicks, you can take the buff display in the top right of your screen from an unmitigated disaster to something that you can actually get some information out of. And as it turns out, that's pretty useful. Those few checkboxes already do so much to help us, but we can make it even better. Tell me if this is a situation you've ever found yourself in. You've just killed a boss, and some ability of yours continues to do damage whether you're attacking or not, whether it be a Dawn Warrior or a Wind Archer's origin skill. The boss dies, the screen fades to black, and your summon is getting ready to ravage that loot box like it's meat with a fresh package of brownies. Forget even trying to change into drop gear, you know your only chance is to frantically right click the shit out of every buff in the top right of your screen until you get the culprit. You're not even always successful, and how many other buffs need to die in pursuit of this? Instead, they finally offer us a better alternative. When you hit that new, shiny, beautiful button, you are met with a UI where you can customize your buff display almost in a way like you're putting movable hotbars on your screen, but for buffs. You're able to choose how many rows you want and how how many basically buff slots you would like to appear in each row. Now the number you pick doesn't really matter. In my own opinion, I think it's better to overshoot than anything because it's not like these slots just show up empty on your screen. They need to have a buff active to actually show up. So it really doesn't matter if you do 10 by 10, it just might be a little unsightly in the UI settings. But I typically do five times 10, that way I have a lot of space to work with and five rows is more than enough for me. Once you choose your numbers and you hit save, now you actually have some spaces to work with. Now to add buffs to this, you actually need to click each row individually, open your skill book, and click the buff you would like to add. From here on out, it's a lot of personal preference, but if you would like some inspiration, I'm gonna go through a handful of my characters and show you how I would actually like to set them up myself. My goal here is to keep things as uniform as I possibly can, which means each row is basically going to be designated for its own thing. At the very top in row number one, that is typically where I like to have iframes, percent HP reductions, cheat deaths, basically anything that is on a short timer and going to save my life. The second row is typically where I keep my summons, my solar to fountain, or my soul Janus if I'm on a character that has it, or whatever summon my class has. In Wind Archer's case here on the screen, it is where I'm deciding to put my taunt. Now in Wind Archer's case, the taunt isn't something you always need to know whether it's there or not with a buff icon. The visual animation for it is pretty damn obvious thanks to it not being affected by skill transparency anymore. Now in the case of Damien, Wind Archers use their taunt to slow down his fears in phase two and there are some times where the sphere actually breaks out from a taunt, then you would like to right click the old one so you can get it tightly back into the corner and then summon a new one in its place. Now let's move over to my Shadower that has some things that the Wind Archer doesn't have. For starters, it has an origin skill. Now we all know that origin skills have iframes and while it may not always be important to track it because it has an absolute bind attached to it that generally keeps you safe, it doesn't hurt to put it on here just because. Your class's origin might also just have some other buff attached to it that you might like to track. Shadower also has trick Trickblade Trick Blade is an attack, but it also has an iframe attached to it, meaning yes, you can put it up with your buffs. You can also put something like Smokescreen, because it does count as a buff while it's active, even though it's something you deploy on the map. One thing I also like to do as my Shadower specifically is I also like to put Dark Sight on the buff screen. Yeah, Dark Sight has a very clear visual indicator of you being in like stealth, but there are a lot of times where a lot of boss animations are going on, you've got animations. Sometimes it's a little bit difficult to see if you are actually in Dark Sight or not, so having an icon on your screen like that, pretty useful if you ask me. Moving on to my Buccaneer here, we have a class that has a lot of fake iframes. Fake iframes, as I call them, are iframes that are attached to your burst that don't really get used as reactive iframes, instead are just designed to protect your burst. I would still like to keep track of them anyway. Now, one thing Buccaneer does have is Time Leap. Now, Time Leap is a good example of something you may not expect to be trackable on the buff tracker. However, when Time Leap is actually used, you're actually left with a buff, if you want to call it that, that indicates that you can't be affected by Time Leap for that amount of time. So that can actually use to keep track of that as well. Buccaneer is also capable of tracking their defensive stance, their passive that triggers a percent HP damage reduction every once in a while just for attacking. I also like to put Pirate Banner down there in the tier that I designate for basically buffs I would like to keep track of, as well as roll of the dice for any pirate that has the dice. Just make sure you don't add loaded dice to toggle. Now for Nightwalker, because they have at least one kind of unique-ish thing, and that is Vitality Scythe. This is their passive that stacks up and eventually gives you a small health shield. And again, while you can easily see a yellow shield on your health bar, you can't exactly see the buff stacking up and know when you have a shield coming necessarily. They also have a very important, very short duration buff they would like to keep track of being their shadow bite giving them final damage. And it's something that I'm personally really bad at tracking when I'm playing my Nightwalker, which isn't very often, but it's still nice to just have the buff or in some cases, a lot of cases, the absence of a buff to remind you to do your job and play your class properly. 
Now moving on to my Dawn Warrior, which has at least a couple things that no other character on my account has. For starters, a Ring of Restraint, an Ozbring. In this case, I like to keep track of my Ring of Restraint in the top tier, which also houses my Eclipse, one of the most important buffs to keep track of for a Dawn Warrior. You need to sync up all Dawn Warrior's buffs at the right time to do Optimal Burst. And admittedly, I'm pretty bad at making the timing perfect, but hey, I don't care, I get results. They also have a double charge iframe, something that I don't think any other class has. Now, keeping track of like a second or a second and a half of iframes is not that hard with muscle memory, but one thing that can be a little bit tricky is when you do finally pop Eclipse, the little yellow buff at the top there, Dawn Warrior gets like five seconds of invincibility, and then it can be very easy to either overestimate or underestimate. So having not only the buff in the top of my buffs, but the iframe it gives is incredibly helpful. Dawn Warrior is also capable of tracking their two passive procs, the things that I put next to my two summons in the second tier. For all you shades out there, you can also do the same thing with your true spirit claw from fifth job and I imagine no matter what class you are if you have some kind of enhanced version like this whether it be dual blader shade angelic buster demon slayer you can probably track every single one because they usually all have some kind of debuff icon indicating that it's not ready yet. Now with my Cannon Master, the main draw to this initially was to keep track of all my summons. And while that is really important, and I am glad to have that feature for tracking my summons, my favorite part of it was actually being able to see my monkey roulette buff a lot easier. Seeing it in the top right is always possible. It's not like it wasn't there, but having it in an area of my screen that is a little more central to my vision and where I'm actually focused on during a boss fight, is a lot better. It's also just nice to keep track of Cannon Master's iframe, because like Dawn Warrior, it's a little unique. You get an iframe for an initially casting it and holding it for a little bit and then when you release it. Cannon Master also has a buff from Poolmaker that they need to keep up that has a rather short duration, very similarly to Nightwalker's Bite, so keeping track of it on this instead of in the top right of your screen, very helpful. As you can see, there are a lot of applications for this tool, and really, I encourage you to play around with it and find out what works for you and what works for your class. Honestly, try like every little passive, every little ability. If you think it has some kind of buff tied to it, well, it just might. And if you want to keep track of it, well, it can be useful. Unfortunately, there are some things that you really wish would give a buff, but they just don't. Like Hero's Will, the thing, the, the, the status immunity thing that I guarantee like 90% of you never use. Maybe if it had a buff indicating when it was actually working, maybe you would. But let's be honest for a second, you wouldn't use it. It wouldn't change anything. But there are some other things like both Shadower and presumably Night Lord's little Shadow flare summon thing that they have from third job that does not have a buff icon so you can't track that oh and when you're doing boss mules or if you just feel like wasting a bunch of links in a day when it comes to the angelic buster link skill you need to actually have it linked to put it in your buff tracker and i highly recommend you do because it is an important thing to track but you know do it as you do it as you do boss mules remember i am i'm gonna do my best it's probably gonna take me months to get them all on my bar.